Realigning our epistemology. Cognitive dissonance is the feeling of discomfort one feels when actions fail to conform to beliefs. To most scientists, making claims about truth without a statistically significant result to point to elicit substantial cognitive dissonance. This perhaps more than anything demonstrates our over-reliance on NHST as a substitute for a more robust epistemology. There are several things we can do to learn from data without suffering from cognitive dissonance, even without significance tests. Altogether they amount to a different epistemological approach to epidemiology for space exploration. In 1965 Sir Austin Bradford Hill described nine guidelines for determining causation from scientific evidence. It is worth noting that while one of the guidelines deals with strength of association, or what we might recognize as effect size, none of the criteria deal with significance testing or p-values. Explicitly, Hill called for examining the quality of the relationship between exposure and outcome, the logical features of how the evidence suggests they interact, and how that fits with prior knowledge of the same or similar subject matter. This sort of prescription is well suited to the small in environment of space medicine. Similar to Hill's work, modern causal inference methods may also be of great use in space health research. These methods have sought to mathematically formalize causation in order to make valid use of observational data for causal estimation and to avoid introducing biases in analyzing such data. Perhaps more important than the methods of analysis that this framework has promoted is the understanding of the assumptions necessary to make causal statements from non-randomized data. Merely understanding the assumptions of positivity, consistency, and conditional exchangeability, and what happens when one violates them, can be of tremendous help when trying to draw inferences based on limited data. A common tool used in modern causal inference is a special type of network graph known as the directed acyclic graph, DAG. These are network maps that reflect causal relationships. DAGs are drawn according to some simple rules, but making and using these diagrams can be quite useful for clarifying thinking and formulating testable hypotheses. If we factorize a joint probability distribution over a DAG, we create a Bayesian network, a powerful tool of probabilistic inference. If we decompose a correlation or covariance matrix over a DAG, we can do path analysis or structural equation modeling forms of latent variable analysis. Even without any data collected at all, the structure of a DAG implies variable dependencies and independencies, which in turn have implications for what is and is not possible in the system from which the data were acquired, and thus can help guide critical thinking about problems. A final epistemological realignment is to define specific, sensible hypotheses given the question at hand, which may or may not conform to the typical NHSD two-tailed tests of significance. Examples of such alternatives include equivalence testing, inferiority testing, and a still more exotic choice, the modus tollens. All of these ask different questions than whether the central tendency of a sample shows enough difference to events a significant p-value for the given sample size and variance. By changing the testable hypothesis to be more specific to what we really would like to know, we can often obtain an answer that is not only more sensible, but often more statistically powerful too which might then bring NHSD back into the realm of possibility to further refine the analysis.